Welcome to What's the Risk, hosted by myself, Daniel Crow, and Peter Mansell, founder of Mansell Financial Group, a financial advice business he founded in 1980. This is a simple video series we hope investors can use to better understand index and portfolio performance, along with addressing some investment questions and dilemmas. This episode is on an issue that new investors can face because ETFs are easy to get started with and investors might try and build a portfolio by adding ETFs by their label. They might think they're diversifying by adding additional ETFs, but ultimately they're just owning more of the same thing. Your Investment Philosophy, a book we wrote available at Amazon. Disclaimer, please pause and read. Suffice to say our intent is educational and not rendering financial advice. They make us tap to sign. These are simple concepts. We'd like investors to better understand risk so they can make informed decisions. This is a meme I found online. It's based on a popular sort of meme format and it highlights the idea of focusing on something that becomes all-consuming. And in this instance, the person is trying to diversify and they keep loading up on their portfolio with another ETF and it becomes more and more concentrated and it's the end of the cycle and nothing actually improves. So it's kind of messy and chaotic. And I put this in here, Peter, because building a portfolio can be confusing. It's sold as quite easy now because everyone can just buy an ETF with their broking account. But the problem with that is not everyone has access to the data or knows where to find it to actually figure out what they're buying. I think it's pretty obvious with the range of ETFs that are out there and available and that are promoted pretty uh aggressively in the marketplace, investors could readily fall into the trap of buying a range of ETFs that they think give them diversification. But in fact, when you look under the bonnet, they've actually bought four of the same car. They're just in different colours. We'll make an assumption that a new investor has done some reading. They've figured out VGS from Vanguard is Global Stocks. IVV from BlackRock is S&P 500. NDQ from Beta Shares is the NASDAQ. And who doesn't want to own the NASDAQ? And they also want some ethical exposure. They've concluded that these four ETFs suit their, their needs and everything they're interested in. That's essentially the thinking behind their portfolio. So what we're going to see is what happens when we combine them one by one into eventually what will become a 25% four-way split. This is VGS, 1,360 holdings according to Morningstar, and this is the top 10 big names, Apple just under 5%, and JP Morgan just under 1% rounding out the top 10. As I just make the comment there, Peter, this is very well diversified, large cap ETF. Absolutely. This is a very good representation of the international stock markets on a market weighted basis across the 1360 stocks that make up nearly all of the developed international stock market. You look at the names there, Apple sitting at the top, Microsoft right below it, a couple down, you've got Amazon. These are all household names and we, we've got to get down to the 10th biggest holding before we actually reach one of the major banks and, and that represents less than 1% of the actual market capitalization or the portfolio. And even even when you add all 10 of those stocks up, you, despite the fact that they're absolute behemoths, they're just giants of the free market capitalist world, you've actually got about 25% of the portfolio in 10 stocks, but there's actually 1,350 other stocks that make up the other 75%. This is adding in IVV, the S&P 500, split 50-50 with VGS. It contains most but not all of the stocks in IVV. I did double check here, found some additional holdings in IVV that weren't in VGS. Invesco was one of them. I don't know if it's exactly 17 stock holdings, but it confirmed some additional stocks were in there. When I mean, you're looking at the top 10, JP Morgan disappears and Berkshire Hathaway now appears and everything in green increases in size in the top 10 when you add IVV. And, and what you're seeing there is you're actually, by blending those two ETFs, you've actually taken an even bigger bet on Apple and Microsoft. You've attempted to diversify further, but you've actually concentrated more at the top end. But yes, you've snuck Berkshire Hathaway in. And so psychologically, they probably feel good about it. And Berkshire Hathaway has been very successful over a long time. But the bottom line is the attempt to diversify here has been completely undermined by the greater concentration in those first four stocks. This is adding in NDQ, so the NASDAQ, and it's split three ways in this instance. So everything in green increases in size. Berkshire and Eli Lilly go out. Tesla and Costco come into the top 10. There's uh, 22 additional holdings from VGS. As you can see, Apple's grown even bigger. The 10 biggest holdings now represent about 33% 
of the portfolio. Whereas we started off with the first ETF, the top 10 stocks only represented 25% of the portfolio, but we've actually concentrated inside the top 10 to a much higher degree. So again, the attempt to diversify has actually been undermined because there's in fact a greater concentration. Adding in ETHI or ETHI, global sustainability, now split four ways between the four ETFs and orange is just indicating that this decreases the concentration slightly, but it's still more concentrated than the combo of VGS and IVV. So Tesla and Costco now drop out and Visa and MasterCard come in via the sustainability ETF into the into the top 10. There's now an additional 27 holdings by adding three more ETFs and Holdings is important, and we'll talk about that a bit later. The question is, what have you achieved? Because this isn't actually diversification, I'd argue. Yes, the the 33% that I referred to on the prior slides probably backed down, but you know we've taken three more bets and we've effectively ended up in the same place. And, and the total increase in diversification is 37 stocks, which, which represents less than 3% more diversification than what we had to start with. Now, that's completely contrary to the work of Harry Markowitz that won him the Nobel Prize for Economics. Looking at the efficient frontier over the past five years, the best performance was actually the four-way split, slightly ahead of the three-way split, but they are the most volatile constructions. So yes, you have been compensated, but if you were trying to diversify, you kind of went about it the wrong way because the point of diversification is to lower risk and portfolio volatility. In this instance, the end doesn't necessarily justify the means because luck is in a judicious portfolio management strategy. Absolutely. Markowitz's portfolio construction and defining work makes it clear that a more broadly diversified portfolio should, in fact, experience lower volatility. And yet we've got from VGS, in the, which is the green dot, heading up and to the right, as each of those portfolios has slightly increased the number of stocks in the portfolio, supposedly greater diversification, the actual volatility of the portfolios have increased. Yes, there's been a higher rate of return, but with greater diversification, there should be less volatility. This has not been achieved by blending these four ETFs. Here's the talking point. This has come about by the hypothetical person saying, I want a global allocation. Then I want the biggest US stocks. Then I want the NASDAQ and tech. Then I want ethical, some ethical exposure. And they've added 27 holdings with three more ETFs and all the major holdings stay very similar. And when I mentioned holding difference before, this is using Morningstar to uh, calculate this. Morningstar may not necessarily be counting totally additional stocks. I may actually be counting cash and derivatives as additional holdings. So the difference in holdings may actually be lower than what we think. Yeah, entirely possible. And at the end of the day, portfolios should be better diversified if investors want a more reliable outcome. Another point about this is too, the hypothetical person has just gone all in on large caps, develop large caps as well. In, our, in previous commentaries, we've referred to emerging markets. This particular portfolio doesn't address that sector. There's no factor exposure in relation to value stocks or size or cash profitability. And we know that the historical evidence is using those risk factors within a portfolio in a systematic manner will deliver higher rates of return. So, you know, there's a number of ways in which the attempts here are failing sound diversification. So just to sum up, it doesn't matter what the label says. You need to check what's under the hood when you're constructing a portfolio. And you can probably do that simply just by going to the ETF provider's website and looking at the holdings. And then you have to run the comparison yourself. There's spreadsheets there that you can check. There's generally a listing on, on every provider's website what the holdings is in each ETF. Uh, Sources and descriptions of data, and that's the constructions that we used. So thanks for your time. Okay, bye for now.